Before we get into any examples that solve vertical curves, I want to take a look at this quick example first um, and kind of get more familiar with some of the terms and expressions we've used in the grading videos and as well as some of the terms in the previous vertical curves videos. Um, in this example, we're not going to actually look at a vertical curve, um, but we're, we are going to look at the tangents used to create a vertical curve. And we're going to explore things like PVI, or the point of vertical intersection, um, elevation, stationing, and just dealing with tangents in general. And I think this example will be uh, pretty good to do so. So here we have a mountain in black, and in this mountain we want to uh, create a vertical curve. And in order to create a vertical curve, you need an entering tangent and an exiting tangent to specify some of the geometric properties of a vertical curve. Um, so here we have a mountain, and I've already drawn the entering grade and the exiting grade, grade 1 and grade 2. I've plotted two points of elevation and their respective stations uh, for each of the grades. And we'll just run through a set of questions, um, and at the, the very end we'll look at uh, the point of vertical intersection and how we can use this information and what we've learned, I'm sorry, what we've learned in the grading videos and what we've learned in the vertical curves video uh, to solve uh, the elevation of a PVI and there's many ways you can do it. Um, but first, let's look at our first question and our first question is uh, just find, simply find the grade um, for both of these tangents. So find G1 and find G2. And if you remember from the grading videos I'm going to write 1 uh, grades. If you remember from the grading videos, uh, a grade, or G, uh, was equal to the change in elevation over the distance. Okay, And that simply means uh, elevation B minus elevation A over station B minus station A. Oops, station A. Right, that's our grade um, equation. Right. Uh, so if we looked at one grade at a time, if we looked at G1 first, uh, let me do that in blue. Uh, G1, well, elevation B is the higher elevation here, right? Um, and that's 604. So 604 minus elevation A, which is 600 divided by the chain, or I'm sorry, the difference in their respective stations. So station B in this case would be 23 plus uh, 0, 0. And remember, remember, we're finding our grades in percent, so that means our stations are going to be just in stations, not feet, right? So station A is station 23, and station B, I'm sorry, station B is 23, and station A is 21, right? So if we, if we solve that out, uh, 604 minus 600 is 4, and 23 over 20, or 23 minus 21 is 2. That gives us a positive 2% grade, right? So that means G1 is 2% positive, right? And for grade 2, again, it's change in elevation over the change in stations. Um, so for grade 2, uh, elevation B here would be 599 minus uh, the first elevation, 604. 604 over 34 minus 29. Right? And so grade 2 would simply be uh, negative 5, right? 599 minus 604. Um, over 34 minus 29, which is also 5. So grade 2 is actually a negative 1% grade. So I'm going to write that over here. Uh, grade 2 is a negative 1%. Okay, great. So our next question is going to be, use this information, let's find, let's find, uh, the point of vertical intersection, PVI. Okay, so before I actually get into um, 
some of the characteristics of the PVI, I'm actually going to draw out our two tangents again, grade one and grade two. Um, so your entering tangent is here. Oops, you can't see that. And your exiting tangent is that. Right, so grade one is 2% and grade two is negative 1%. Okay, and let me just draw out our first elevation here, which is 600. And actually, let's let's uh, let's take a look at this mountain and let's look at just this portion here. Okay. Um, so instead of 600, let's do 604. 604, and then whatever elevation this is, I believe it's it's also 604, right? 604. And this is at station 23. And this is at station 29. Okay, so here we have our entering tangent and our exiting tangent, and we need to use this information, our grades, our elevations, and our stations to find the PVI. Now, a couple things to note about PVI. The PVI, or the point of vertical intersection, is where the two grades intersect. So in this case, that would be the PVI, right? And a, a a good good note to keep in mind is that the PVI is located at the middle of a vertical curve for simple vertical curves is at the middle of the curve but a PVI is not located at the highest point of the curve and we're going to take a look at some of those scenarios in future videos but for now just remember that a PVI is located at the middle of a curve but it's not always located at the highest point of the curve or a lowest point if you have a sag right here we have a crest vertical curve okay um, so let's start off with this let's start off with how many stations there are between station 23 and 29 well oops that's six stations right and so if if you remember from the vertical curves video the state uh, the parameter x is the distance uh, from from a point on the left side of the vertical curve to any distance along um, that vertical curve. So if I were to say the distance from station 23, if I consider that my zero point, um, this distance, let's call x. And if we know this is already six stations, then that means the distance from here to here would be 6 minus x. Right, you have x and then 6 minus x. And uh, the key to solving this problem, to finding out what the point of vertical intersection is, is that both grades at the intersection share the same elevation. In other words, um, elevation, let's call the first, first uh, tangent at that point, elevation 1 is equal to elevation 2, and 2 would be the elevation at that point for, for the second grade, right? That's the key here. So, the elevation at 1 at this point, so the elevation at this point along on tangent 1 uh, would be, if we were to do it mathematically, it would be 604 plus 2x, right? 604 times the grade times the station distance. And that's equal to 604 plus 1, right? Plus 1, you're going up. 604 plus 1, that's your slope, times your distance, which is 6 minus x. If you don't know where this is coming back, coming from, go and watch, I would suggest go and watch uh, the grading videos, right? So here we can simply start solving. 604 and 604 cancel out, so you're left with 2x is equal to 6 minus x. Um, if I added x to both sides, I'd get 3x is equal to 6. Right? So if I solved for that, x would be two stations. This gives us, oops, you can't see that. This gives us some very important information. It's saying at x equals two stations, that's where the PVI is located. 
So x is equal to 2 here, right? So the, for, for question 2, we wanted to figure out what the elevation of PVI was. And we needed to use grades, elevations, and stations to figure out that information. Now we have a really crucial uh, piece of information here. We know that the PVI is located at two stations from station 23. So, let me do this in blue. To solve our question, PVI is equal to station 23 plus two stations, and that's station 25. Okay, that gives us um, the station here for PVI, right? So that means the elevation, elevation of PVI is equal to 604. Actually, the elevation of PVI is equal to any one of these original parts of the equation, right? Because this was the elevation of PVI from grade 1, and this was the PVI elevation of PVI from grade 2. So really, we can take this x that we got and plug it into either one of these, and that would give us the elevation for PVI. So let me just use the left side of the equation. It's a little bit uh, shorter. So 604 plus 2x. 604 plus 2 times 2 stations, 604 uh, plus 4, so that so now the elevation of PVI is 608. Okay, so this is how we can use grades, elevations, and stations um, to figure out what the elevation of PVI is. So hopefully this was a good um, introduction to some of the more complex problems we'll be doing with vertical curves.